This program is rated SPG. It contains scenes with themes, language, violence, sex, horror, or drugs, which may not be suitable for children. Strong parental guidance is advised. Do you wash your body, including your organs below, with the right soap and water? Do you wear clean and comfortable clothes and underwear? Do you change underwear as often as necessary? Do you take supplements rich in iron? Do you get adequate sleep? Do you eat nutritious food and do you exercise regularly? Do you exercise care whenever you use toilets in public places? And do you regularly visit your doctor for physical activity? If your answer is yes, I do this always, then you are really taking good care of your reproductive organs. However, if you are not sure of your answer and said no, then it's time for you to follow these practices. Sunday and tons of learning with me, Teacher Danny. Oh, yeah. And I hope you kids would learn a lot today. But may I remind you that our topic for today is sensitive as these organs. We are talking about the male and female reproductive organs. The biggest question that you may have in mind is how can you maintain a healthy body and protect yourselves from diseases related to our reproductive organs or reproductive systems? <laughs> now to help us in answering this, we will ask the help of my good friend who is a licensed teacher and also a licensed nurse by profession. So let us welcome Mr. Alan Dominguez. Hello, Teacher Danny. I'm very glad to be part of this fun and learning blog. And uh, I hope I can share my knowledge to those uh, children who are watching. And by the way, good morning to the parents and of course to the learners uh, who are out there. I know how busy you are, Nurse Allen, teaching the future heroes of our nation. But don't worry, I know that this is just your break time, so this will be fast. We will just ask how important our body organ for reproduction and why is there a must to protect them? The reproductive system is a very important yet very sensitive system of the body. That is why, boys and girls, you should take care of your body to avoid health problems. That is right, teacher nurse. They are sensitive just like what we have mentioned. Now, could you share to them some health problems related to the reproductive system? Some of the disorders of the reproductive system are the following. First is we have tumors. Second is we have sterility, and the third one is we have cancer. And all of these diseases are because of our body's exposure to hazardous substances, pollution, radiation, cigarette smoking, and prohibited drugs. Sterility kids means not being or capable of having an offspring or baby. On the other hand, tumor happens when body tissues have abnormal growth, and this may lead to cancer. Cancer is its worst case. This is fatal. And for cancers, cells are abnormally growing and spreading. The onset of cancer usually begins as a solitary tumor in a specific area of the body. If the tumor is not removed, cancer has the ability to spread to nearby organs as well as places far away from the origin, such as the brain. So how does cancer move to new areas, and why are some organs more likely to get infected than others? The process of cancer spreading across the body is known as metastasis. It begins when cancer cells from the initial tumor invade nearby normal tissue. As 
the cells proliferate, they spread via one of the three common routes of metastasis. Transcoalomic, lymphatic, or hematogenous spread. In transcoalomic spread, malignant cells penetrate the covering surfaces of cavities in our body. These surfaces are known as peritoneum and serve as walls to segment the body cavity. Malignant cells in ovarian cancer, for example, spread through peritoneum, which connects the ovary to the liver, resulting in metastasis on the liver surface. Next, cancerous cells invade blood vessels when they undergo hematogenous spread. As there are blood vessels almost everywhere in the body, malignant cells utilize this to reach more distant parts of the body. Finally, lymphatic spread occurs when the cancer invades the lymph nodes and travels to other parts of the body via the lymphatic system. As this system drains many parts of the body, it also provides a large network for the cancer. In addition, the lymphatic vessels empty into the blood circulation, allowing the malignant cells to undergo hematogenous spread. Once at a new site, the cells once again undergo proliferation and form small tumors known as micrometastases. These small tumors then grow into full-fledged tumors and complete the metastatic process. Different cancers have been known to have specific sites of metastasis. For example, prostate cancer commonly metastasizes to the bone, while colon cancer metastasizes to the liver. Meanwhile, teacher nurse, are there any dangerous diseases that may be transmitted? Gonorrhea and syphilis are sexually transmitted infections that are contagious if not treated early. This can cause severe damage of the certain parts of our body. Well, according to my source, gonorrhea are bacterial infection and are mostly happening among males. Oh, no. And its symptoms are yellowish discharges accompanied by itching and burning. Ow. On the other hand, syphilis is also caused by bacteria which causes lesions and sores. Ring, ring, ring. Acquired immunodeficiency syndrome is considered a serious sexually transmitted infections and people with AIDS will experience body weakening, most especially the immune system, the body system responsible for defense against diseases. And I'm already afraid of those two. What more with AIDS? Now, based on this article, AIDS can also be transmitted by a mother having AIDS to her babies. Oh my gosh. Oh no. <laughs> Healing prayers. But how can we help ourselves, Sir Allen? Do you have any suggestion that may enlighten us? Here are some ways on how are we going to take good care of our reproductive organs. First, keep your genitals clean at all times. Second, change your underwear every day or as often as necessary. Third, take a bath every day. Next is to avoid using dirty public washrooms. Another is to eat nutritious food and have adequate rest and sleep. And lastly, consult your physician for any irritations in your reproductive organs. Wow, those are just as easy as one, two, three, rather than acquiring those diseases. Now, thank you very much, Teacher Allen, for sharing all of this. Now, do you have any words before going back to your duty? Thank you, Teacher Danny, for this opportunity for me to share my knowledge to our young children. That's it. To my dearest school children and to the parents out there, Always bear in mind all the things that we discuss for today. This is Nurse Allen saying, keep safe and happy learning! Alright, so again and again and again, 
Let's practice proper hygiene to keep not just our reproductive organ clean, but our whole body as well. And bear in mind that not all people are healthy. Some of them already have illnesses and others are even in their worst cases fighting for their lives. And now for your task today, comment below on the things we can do to help them. What can a little child do to at least ease the pain of others who are suffering from illnesses? If only our smiles can heal them, right? We can make them happy. But I believe that happiness and love are more contagious than these illnesses, right? So let us not forget to spread love and happiness! Oh, Nurse Joy! A few moments later. So that's it guys. That is just a short but very informative day with me and Teacher Allen. And do not forget to hit the thumbs up button, ring the bell, and share what you've learned to all the other kids out there. Bye bye!